I want to talk a little bit about benchmarking. We did as part of Problem Set 3, you had an opportunity to submit your server and get a benchmark score running your server in EC2 and our test running some benchmarks and giving you a score from that. When we talked about benchmarking, does that fit into, so what are the possible reasons that you want to do benchmarking? There are two kinds of reasons people do benchmarking. Okay, testing performance. So that's sort of what benchmarking is doing. It's doing some tests. So that's sort of by definition what benchmarking is doing is doing some kind of test performance. Why do we want to do it? Yes? Good, yeah. So it's largely to be able to do comparisons. And that's where the real distinction between two kinds of benchmarking comes in. There's benchmarking that you're doing as a developer where what you want to do is compare it to a previous version of your code. You want to try to find the best solution to some problem and you want to be able to do tweaks to your code and compare how that affects the performance and learn about what is affecting the performance and learn about where the time is going. The other kind of comparison is more the customer. So there's benchmarking that a developer is doing to try to improve things and understand where the time is going. There's benchmarking a customer is doing to try to compare to different products or to competing vendors. These are really quite different things. How are they different? So wh which one, when you're submitting your problem set three to our benchmarking server, which one is that? Is that developer benchmarking or customer benchmarking? Yes. So I think some of you are using it as developer benchmarking. Right? We're using it as a let's try some tweak and resubmit and see if it improves the score. In terms of how at least the fact that there was a sort of a leaderboard and some ego and pride to get to the top of the leaderboard, that's much more customer benchmarking. Right? So if your goal to do benchmarking is to learn about performance of your system, the developer benchmarks, you want to do things where you can easily understand where the performance time is going. The way the problem set three benchmarking was, it's much more of a customer benchmark. We were trying to find a way to give a score to a server and see which one's the best. A lot of things very arbitrary about how this is done, especially how it was done by our benchmarking and the fact that a lot of the variance comes from you're running on some EC2 node, the amount of computing power you get is not at all guaranteed when you're using the free tier EC2 nodes. What's the other big difference between developer benchmarking and customer benchmarking? This is more of a game theory kind of question now. Yeah. Okay, good. So if you're a developer benchmarking your own code, you don't have any incentive to cheat. Presumably you want to get the most honest, useful results from your benchmark as possible. There's no real incentive to cheat. If you're having a product that's competing with other products and you want to win, Certainly there's an incentive to cheat. Now, you're all UVA students, so you have the honor system and would never cheat, and that's okay. This does not really apply to vendors. If we're doing benchmarking as a customer to try to provide information to customers, well, we want to have a benchmark that measures the typical uses. We want to have a benchmark that is going to be well accepted, but we also have to worry about cheating. How can people cheat on benchmarks? What does it mean to cheat on a benchmark? Yes. Good. There's a big gray area where it's, it's not really cheating. It's more targeting. Okay, good. No, that's a good answer. Where the line becomes cheating instead of targeting is, is a very fuzzy one. Certainly, it makes sense to target a benchmark, and then you are optimizing for the things the benchmark measures. That's sort of okay. If the benchmark is measuring the right things, well, if someone targets the benchmark and optimizes for what it's measuring, then that's a good thing. If the benchmark is not measuring the right things. So let's say it is something specific about EC2 and to make your server run well on EC2, you've got to do lots of tweaks to it that actually make it worse if you're running it on some other cloud platform or running it on your own infrastructure. Then that benchmark is not working well unless the customer actually wants to run your server on EC2, in which case it's perfectly okay if you optimize it to run on EC2 until next month and the EC2 machines change and all the optimizations you did actually make it slower once you move up from the free tier to the medium or the, the higher tier EC2 servers. So that kind of targeting is sort of okay. What other kinds of cheating do people do on benchmark? If you wanted to go beyond that gray area of just targeting, what kinds of things could you do? Good, so you could do things to really take advantage of knowing what the benchmark does. If you really wanted to take advantage of knowing what the benchmark does, what should you do to take advantage of caching even more dramatically than that? Good, yes, the benchmark is doing a static list of requests. There's a very fixed set of things that were being requested, and since you created the files, you know what they are, so you don't need to parse the whole request. What happens when you're browsing the web normally and you request the same page over and over again? What happens? 
Yes. Your local browser cache can respond to the request. You don't even need to go to the server if you set things right in the HTTP headers. Right, so that the best way to cheat on our benchmark, if you add an HTTP header to set the cache control, then since our benchmark is requesting the same file over and over again, after the first time it wouldn't have to actually request it again. So I'm not encouraging you to do these kinds of things, but these are the kinds of things that make competitive benchmarks tricky. You could do things to the benchmark to prevent that, to say we're going to change the contents every time, but then all the things that you do to do server-side caching no longer would pay off. How common do you think cheating is on benchmarks in the real world? Do vendors actually do silly stuff like this? All the time. Benchmarks are mostly about cheating. This is a nice study of the Android benchmarks, how much cheating there is. The kinds of things that you do to cheat, so the most common thing in compiler benchmarks is someone writes a compiler that specially recognizes the input that matches the spec benchmark or the benchmarks that are being used to test that compiler. And then instead of using the rest of the compiler at all, has some hand-tuned code that they generate for that particular benchmark. And lots of compiler vendors do this kind of thing. So it doesn't evaluate the compiler very well. What happens on the Android benchmarks, you're definitely starting by doing something to detect that you're running a benchmark. What Samsung was doing is your processor and your device are all designed to not burn up under normal operation, and you have thermal limits, and you slow down to avoid hitting them. But you can go above them once in a while, and the chances that you burn up your device if you're above the thermal limit for the short amount of time that you're running a benchmark is pretty low. Why not notice as a benchmark and raise the thermal limits? You'll do better. The other thing they're doing is, is also raising the, the voltage and frequency, doing things that if you did them normally, your battery would run down very quickly. But if you're doing it on a performance benchmark that's not evaluating battery life, it gets you some better performance. The study they did was basically everyone's cheating on something except for Google and NVIDIA, apparently. It's just Samsung is better at cheating than most of the others. Benchmarking in the real world, if you don't keep your benchmark secret, people can target it and optimize for it and do things that definitely seem more like cheating than legitimately targeting. If you keep it secret, well, maybe you can prevent that, but people don't have a lot of confidence in benchmarks that are kept secret. Then you don't actually know what they're testing, and you can't actually release it afterwards. The best thing you can do is make the benchmark as close to the real thing you care about as possible. So if someone does well on the benchmark, it means they're also going to do well for real. These kinds of things maybe you could prevent by saying part of the benchmark is also going to measure battery use, and we're going to make it run long enough that if you cheat on these thermal limits, you're going to burn up your phone, and that's going to look pretty bad in the review. What about benchmarking your servers? So these were the results as of midnight when the deadline was. They're being ranked just by the product of these two, which is definitely an arbitrary way to rank things. You could weight these things differently. If you use different units, that product would mean different things. We're doing the product of those two. The response time is in milliseconds, and the duration is in seconds that it takes to run the whole test. The top ones as of midnight were, this is Wayland's reference solution, and this is someone who is not a UVA student. The good news is that after the deadline, the results changed a little bit. This is what they look like by 6 o'clock this morning. I think this is still the one that's on top. The reference solution is no longer at the top. Apache is way off the list. This is pretty good. Now, we don't have official results yet because we need to know that they didn't actually cheat on the benchmark. It looks like they at least weren't doing local caching because then the response time would be much lower than this. In order for them to win the prize, they'll have to, the class after spring break, tell us about what they did to get good performance to convince us that this was not just cheating on the benchmark.